Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of Into the Void, your StarCraft II Legacy of the Void examination of silver, bronze, and gold level replays sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of Into the Void. It's going to be between Bob and Freeman here today on Port Alexander. Bottom right-hand corner, the red Protoss player, Bob. And top left-hand corner is the blue Terran player, Freeman. Ah. Instead of the spinning logo, which he took so much time to choose and upload, it is instead the face of some random Blizzard employee, which just means it's broken. Maybe it will come back to us, you guys. That would make me happy. Probe scouting here is Bob, although... Although... Oh, that's a Ford. I was going to say, although sometimes it's sneaky. Sometimes this is a sneaky probe. They do always probe scout at this point, but every once in a while, it is something sinister. So here comes the probe. He's a throw up that pylon. He's got a forge behind it. He can do some cannon shenanigans. Now, does Freeman see this? He does not. Freeman does not see this. Ready. Is he going to scout it is the question of the day. This is why you worker scout, you guys. This is If you came over, you would see the forge. Freeman throws out the good luck have fun at a minute and 12 seconds after the cannon rush has already begun. Bob says, hey, I'm not, I'm not sending you any good luck or have funning. Oh, he sees it. That is a little bit of a dangerous spot to throw that down in. Okay, we'll see what Freeman's response to this is, if he even recognizes it's happening. This is his camera. And... sees it now? Definitely aware of it now. Oh! Oh! He was trying to get up there, but now the wall off is complete. Okay, so the cannon rush cannot continue here. Unfortunately for Bob. But getting up the ramp and getting some shots off is pretty good. Oh, Marine, don't do that. Marine. Oh, Marine alive. Oh, the probe had stayed up there a little bit longer. This is some actually intense little micro here for between the two players for an Into the Void game. APM is under 100. Well, under 100, though. Which is understandable considering where we are. And that's a gateway. And it's going to be a Zealot. Holy smokes. Dude, getting a Zealot up here is kind of genius. It allows you to have the vision to take down that supply depot and sure you're getting shot at by marines but it doesn't hurt you or kill you as fast as a probe would die so some pretty aggressive stuff here from bob just to get this thing rolling and some shots on the cannon there too come on up the ramp uh, oh and the probe gets killed that's huge losing the probe is massive there where's the zealot the zealot needs to get up the ramp immediately go 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 he gets up the ramp and now the cannons can fire back and now the marines are in trouble Two of them go down instantly. Now there's fire directly on the supply depot. The zealot trying... No, he needs to take down... Help take down the supply depot, but it doesn't really matter. I think Freeman has this held. If there was another secondary backup probe here, it'd be a different story, but there's not. And one of the cannons is going to die. The cannon that could reach the supply depot. That said, the repair was really good anyway. It's not like the... Uh, it, that supply depot was really not in any damage or any danger of getting shot down at any point. So I think at this point, Bob should be done. Bob is working on a gateway back home. He's got a cybernetics core, so he's teching up to stuff. Which is what I like to see. I mean, at this point, it's a failed attempt. You're one base to one base. It is 20 to 20 workers. You've been probing behind this too. So not a huge commitment. And the fact that Freeman walled this off before the probe could get inside and throw up the pylon on the high ground is kind of a big deal. And now there's a tank. So, yeah, not going to happen for you. Tank taking down the cannon and the pylon and the marines helping with that one too. So the army supply is now 10 to 2, which is not really all that ideal for Bob. And he's expanding right now? Bob, you are really counting on the fact that Freeman's not going to counterattack and just murder you in about two minutes, right? I feel like you are really counting on that. I mean, sure, he's taking some time cleaning up your buildings on this side of the map, which... Honestly, kind of a waste of time. But I guess you're worried about additional stuff being thrown up, huh? Oh, this probe is hiding back here. Oh, this Zelda just wants to die. He just wants to die. No real other explanation for that. Are they going to scout this? Uh, they don't... Uh, they see the probe and they see the pylon now. Okay, man, marine vision range is pretty great. So probe down, pylon down. But once again, if Freeman just pushed out with the tank and this many marines, I think he just wins. The marines just walk up here and win. Oh, sure. One cannon. Oh, look at Freeman being passive, though. Freeman. All right, pro tip from Falcon Paladin. If you shut down a cannon rush that hard as a Terran against a Protoss player, just move across the map and see what you can do. I'm not saying it's always going to be this easy, but you could easily have just walked across the map, 
set up your tank, crush this front, no big deal, got the natural base, and been in a huge position, if not straight up won the game outright with this many marines and this many tanks. He's making another tank, he's got a medevac here too, he might push out once he has medevac support, he wants to make sure his natural base completes, which is an admirable thing, but at least scan? Like, at least see what your opponent is up to, because that's a Dark Shrine coming up. And if you know there are Dark uh, Dark Templar coming sooner rather than later, that's always a good thing. It's always a good thing for you, my friend, Mr. Freeman. Always reminds me of uh, Half-Life. Mr. Freeman. With the G-Man. I follow the Half-Life subreddit just because it is an everyday exercise in how sad people are that Half-Life 3 is never going to be a thing. Just something, I don't know, something cathartic about it, something interesting about it. Just being around other people who feel the same way that I do. Half-Life's amazing. It's incredible. I played Half-Life for the first time in 2008, and it was a life-altering, incredible experience. I've played that thing 10 years after it came out initially. Oh, look, we got the thing. Killing means never having to say you're sorry. I know that guy. That's an undead rogue. That's an undead rogue from, um, God, it's a webcomic I used to read. I can't remember the name of it. I fell behind and I never really got caught back up. I'm not sure if it's done or not, actually. That pretty much sums up his character, though. All right, so moving on in. Here is Freeman. He's got a Marine drop and um, Army Supply is zero, dude. Army Supply for Bob is currently zero. He's throwing up pylons on the other side of the map. Bob, you're a crazy person. That's a robotics facility, but... Okay, probe, 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 probe count, super dent, there's your scan, there's your Dark Shrine. Oh, you should have saved your scan for the Dark Templar. That was probably going to pop out and shoot you in the face at some point here. Dude, getting that Dark Shrine is pretty much your win condition. I recommend you focus, nope, everybody needs to focus on that Dark Shrine. E not, nope, some guys are trying to focus down the Nexus here. I don't like it. I don't like what I'm seeing. That said, Bob is not making... Anything. He's not, Oh, he did make some DTs back here. Alright, so the Dark Shrine is now dead. But the Dark Templar are having a great time hacking these guys down from behind. Are there enough Marines to kill this guy? Oh! <laughs> the Stutter Step went poorly. <laughs> and the DT manages to escape. Another DT comes in. And uh, everyone just dies. And the Phoenix is going to kill the Medivac, so... All right, 31 to 21 workers, two base to two base. Freeman has a huge army, but, but the Dark Templar came out and saved the day. When behind Dark Shrine, Bob believes wholeheartedly in that philosophy. This poor medevac is just trying to go home. That's all he's trying to do, just trying to go home. Obviously not going to get there, though. And does scout this forward pylon, which I don't know what the point is. There's tanks on the high ground, tank on the low ground. And Marines behind a wall and a missile turret. Like, you're never, ever... All right, well, that Zealot completely... Ugh, both those Zealots are dead. Tank fire, tank fire. One was injured from being attacked while warping in. Phoenix does manage to escape there. Pylon going to go down. Making another medevac, yet making one more medevac. Two more medevacs, actually. They've already popped out. And check out this forward stuff. It's going to be warped prism with observer support. Maybe warping in DTs into the main base? There's a, there is a missile turret here and here and here and here. It's going to be hard for warp prisms to do much. I mean, at least coming this way, maybe down to the southern section, possibly. Seems possible. All right, so drop number two here from Freeman. He better have scans available. Hey, you have scans available? Yes and yes. All right, good. So two scans available. A lot of Marines here. Do they have upgrades? They have plus one attack. They have combat shield and they have stim. So yeah, they're pretty well upgraded. And look who's taking a third base. It's Bob. Up here at the north, right next to his little proxy robotics facility. Good job for him. <laughs> Way to have some goals here, Bob. I like what you're doing, man. You're down 63 to 36 supply. It's 26 to 9 army supply. And Bob is somehow, some way, magically in this game. Third base is going to try to be constructed over here. He's going to find the... That cannon is doing work. Three kills on that cannon. Didn't cancel the missile turret. Unfortunately, now the tanks and the marines have to come over and clear this thing out. And it's really annoying. Where the heck did that warp prism go? It's hanging out up here. And uh, it doesn't want to go into where the missile turrets are, understandably. So this is scan. One of the DTs defending the main base go down. And the marines are marching right on into this position. Can they take down? A lot of probes are dying, that's for sure. It's a total of 14 workers killed by Freeman. That is two Artosis pylons. I guess by definition they're not Artosis pylons then. 
Uh, DT on the ramp says, I don't, do I want to go up there? All right, here we go. There's your hack. Where's your scan? Two, three, four. There's your scan, and there he gets taken out. So reaction time, not amazing, but at least there was reaction time. So all these buildings are depowered. And uh, it's not looking looking great at all for Bob now. 29 to 13 army supply. War Prism tries to come in and mess with stuff. I guess a stalker goes down to the Marines. Gateway out. Sentry tries to wander it by himself. I mean, this is very, very classic into the void, you guys. These players are not really making the best decisions or enacting the best decisions or plans. But so far, man, Marines and Medivacs, you really can't go wrong with that. Especially in Into the Void. All right, so Marines and Tanks clearing out the stuff here that is up on his side of the map. Uh, probes running for their lives. I guess they'll start mining up from their secret third that Freeman does not know about. Mind you. But yeah, I think Freeman thinks he's got this thing won, but it's not quite over yet. Sure, it's 35 to 13 workers. Sure, it's 31 to 5 army supply. Sure, the APM of Bob is currently zero. But into the void, we've had stranger finishes. We've had stranger finishes than this. There's another... Oh, another Dark Templar! He replaced his Dark Shrine. And the DT gets healed up. How many kills do you have, buddy? Three? That's pretty good. So he does manage to save his natural. And his main base is still alive. It's not like it's dead. Right? Is that a fusion core? we got a fusion core here from Freeman as the follow-up. Is he going battle cruiser? Oh, please... Please let him go battle cruiser. I just I love to see it. Even though in the current meta it's real hard for me to deal with personally. Battle cruisers have gone from being bad units you never ever see to holy smokes, this is actually kind of good. It's a weird transition for a unit to make. I guess Hydra has kind of made that transition too. It's the good thing about StarCraft, man. It's always changing, always got these balance changes coming on in. I'm not sure when they'll stop trying to balance change Legacy of the Void because they're done adding new units. But I guess always changing stuff is good. I mean, Brood War is still incredibly popular despite the fact that it hasn't had a balance change since 2000 or 2001, somewhere around there, which just blows my mind. I can't believe it is still played competitively. Like, st okay, so kind of competitively. Uh, still played in KSL, anyway. Even though, just balance, if you're... Like, if you struggle with something in a matchup, you just have to figure it out. You can't wait for a balance change to save you. It's kind of amazing. All right, man, these Dark Templar, I just, there's missile turrets, one, two missile turrets, a lot of Marines here, coverage. Third base is now landed for Freeman, upgrading that guy to a planetary fortress. Still doesn't know about secret base, which is really hilarious. If Bob used a lot of chrono boost and just started pumping out probes as fast as he could, he could probably catch up an economy here. That said, he only has 16 workers. Not a great place to be. All right, so swinging on in, Warp Prism, trying to get some stuff done. There's detection. All right, there's a interesting a sentry here. Dark Temple are dead because there's two levels of detection here, and uh, the War Prism and the sentry are dead as well. All right, so I mean it's 93 to 23 supply. I think Bob is completely out of it. His production tab is empty. We have battle cruisers in production, sort of, because that's Yamato cannon or Yamato gun. Fourth base coming up here for Freeman. I mean, I admire Bob's spunk. I really do. He's replacing his robotics facility. <laughs> He's making one probe at a time. When he has three nexuses, he could be devoting to making probes pretty much full time. And it would be a good decision for him. I'm, just, I'm going to tell you that right now. He's spending his money well. I mean, we have to appreciate that, right? 100 minerals right now in his bank. That is some good money spending. His probes are leaving the space. Did it just get scanned? It just got scanned. Yeah, that's why. Evacuate! Evacuate the third. It's just been scanned. The Terran army will come wipe us out. But you know what? No, Freeman is not doing that. Instead, he's moving his battle cruisers across the map to just try to wipe out Bob that way. And you know what? I think it's going to work. There's really no anti-air here at all for Bob. He has three Dark Templar, and he has a total of three cannons. All of the cannons are here at the natural base. All right, so some Marines did wander over to the third of Bob. They're going to wipe that sucker out pretty darn easily as again there's literally nothing oops that's some dts man reaction time is important here the upgrades upgrade complete yeah combat shield lets them survive multiple hits from a dark templar to stay alive that's amazing that's really good all right so here we go battle cruisers goodbye twilight council 
Goodbye, Artosis Pylon. Goodbye, Twilight Council again. And that's your good game. Bob is done. And Freeman is your winner in what really was an insane, insanely fun Into the Void here. Bob seems a little bit outclassed. I don't know if that's fair to say overall, really judged just entirely off of one game, but it sure seemed like Freeman just had a better understanding of how to play Terran versus Protoss than Bob did of Protoss versus Terran. The cannon rush was okay, good attempt there at the start, but once he couldn't get the probe up in here to continue the cannon rush, I think he should have just abandoned it, uh, gone back home, expanded, whatnot. Instead, he did kind of expand. He half-heartedly went for some DTs. He half-heartedly went for some more Prism stuff, but never really caught up any of the splash damage that you need to deal with the Terran army. Any Zealot counts. Did he make any Zealots? I don't think he did. Oh, he did. He made some Zealots up here. And the little attempt to threaten at the front at the same time, it was just not... It was not cohesive. So Bob has a lot of stuff to learn here. And really, I suggest you watch some of my high-level PVTs. I've been posting quite a few of those recently to see exactly how to deal with Terran. Uh, honestly, Splash, man. Splash is the answer. All right. Well, shoot. That's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of Into the Void and StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead. And hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you liked what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and a Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And again, if you want me to cast your Into the Void game, send it to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of Into the Void. And until next time, as always, thanks for hanging out, thanks for being here, and watching, and listening, and you take care of yourself. Is it 
Into the void. 